Europe around 40,000 years ago. To get here, early Homo sapiens had to traverse a great distance, having come out of Africa. It's estimated that as few as only 10,000 completed the trek. The rest had not survived the perilous journey. Once they got to the new lands, there were new challenges to face. Our ancestors had to compete with other primate species for the territories of Eurasia, like Homo erectus and Neanderthal man. As they were a nomadic species, Homo sapiens kept moving from place to place, hunting and gathering all along the way. Very often these men of the Paleolithic also uh, scavenged organs or the fat from animals that had been killed by much larger animals. So they had, you know, different uh, ways of acquiring food for acquiring calories from the mammals, basically. Then, around 10,000 years ago, someone had the idea to try something different. They planted a seed in the ground. Well, it's all about taming nature, isn't it? It's, it's beginning to think about man's place within the natural world. Taming the natural world, taming animals, taming the earth, taming the waters, and making a comfortable living for oneself. You have these uh, changes and the transformation of societies, the settling down of people in more permanent villages that become sometimes the cities. We also know that these first, let's say, revolution happen in uh, the area of Mesopotamia, the Middle East, and Anatolia. Though we'll never know who came up with this idea, it took off and spread quickly throughout the entire world. The planted seeds of wheat, rice, and corn meant that future Homo sapiens could stop their ceaseless wandering and live off the land. They had the possibility and at the same time the need to experience what could they make with this regular staple. Not anymore maybe simple boiling, but more complex process such as bread making where you know you have the dough and you have all the process involved. Evidence suggests there were wheat fields in the Fertile Crescent at least 9,000 years ago. Those first farmers essentially lived on a vegetarian diet, whether they liked it or not. Once humans gained some mastery over the land, they went about the domestication of pigs, sheep, goats and cattle. Today it's called animal husbandry. Probably around 6,000 BC, 8 to 6,000 BC, what we might call wow sheep were domesticated and goats. This was a major lift to the daily diet. Uh, in addition to sheep and goats, which were domesticated, uh, this led, of course, to the production of milk. One of the first settlements from the Neolithic age points to the very beginnings of agriculture and civilization as we know it. It's Chattel Hiyuk in Turkey, and it overlooks the Konya Plain, southeast of the present-day city of Konya. Imagine an ancient ancestor sitting around with a full belly he got thanks to farming. He never could have imagined the footprints of civilization he was leaving behind. Farming made civilization a natural possibility. Essentially, without agriculture, there'd be no culture. The early literatures talking about the songs of the herdsmen, the songs of the drovers, the songs of the shepherds. We see farming so intimately connected with the development of literature that it is it's fascinating. Without farming and the tallying of the herds, we don't get an alphabet developing. Sumeria was an urban population, therefore it follows the pattern of city development, urban development, and therefore a dependency on outside sources of food. So you can well imagine that there we have now a trading element in society. People who are bringing the food in from the rural areas, trading, marketing in the 
urban areas. Uh, well, this demands uh, some kind of record keeping. Who is buying and who is selling and all this has becomes uh, suddenly important. Uh, so the Kuna Farm script was uh, developed uh, to make those recordings. The Sumerians, who lived in the part of the world now known as Iraq, were one of the first true civilizations in world history. 11,000 years ago, Sumerian farmers began to grow the cereals barley and wheat. The earliest farmers uh, would develop their uh, agricultural enterprises within a specific geographical location. This is uh, Mesopotamia, the land between the two uh, rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. While Sumerians were growing their crops, flocks of wild sheep were being herded in the Zagros mountain range. On today's maps, the Zagros mountain range lies predominantly in Iran. Then, about 6,500 years ago, the invention of the plow took farming to a whole new level, despite the invention initially being made out of the wrong material. The plow was uh, basically made of wood. That's not the best technology for uh, producing a high amount of food products. The modern farmer would recognize the, still today, the basic technology in uh, grain production and food production, certainly agricultural pr production, uh, is the plow. Around this time, wool was first used for textiles and clothing. The footprints of civilization are found woven into the shirt on your back. The first agricultural revolution quietly developed over the course of 3,500 years but its footprints are still with us. Agriculture transformed humankind and made everything else that came after it possible. It's inescapable. A society that has trouble feeding itself isn't going to last long. Agriculture's upside was clear, but living off the land and living so close to animals was not without its side effects. Every footprint of civilization also has a shadow. The proximity to cattle, to their uh, daily agricultural uh, activities and to the land itself, uh, all this also generated concrete threat of being transmitted with different kinds of disease and uh, infection. Nevertheless, by 3500 BCE, farming had spread far across Eurasia. In only a few thousand years, sometimes for better and sometimes worse, humans have totally transformed this planet. In evolutionary terms, that's a blink of an eye. And it's... The ancients were the first to transform their environment from arid to arable soil. Now, in the not-too-distant future, man plans to leave the footprints of our current civilization on another planet. Contemporary scientists are working on ways to affect the climate of Mars, hoping to increase its atmospheric carbon dioxide pressure. This would have the effect of warming Mars and make it possible to successfully colonize. By increasing its atmospheric carbon dioxide pressure, a process called terraforming, we can also build up the red planet's atmosphere and water content, which would give us the ability to irrigate it. It's a very lofty ambition. NASA estimates that in order to make Mars habitable, it would take 400 years of terraforming and a mere $4 trillion. Thousands of years ago, ancient Egyptian farmers had a more modest goal. They sought to produce enough food to feed their population. In order to accomplish that, they would have to do some terraforming of their own. I'm rather skeptical about that. Why? Because you basically don't have all the conditions that you would have here on the other planet. What is possible to say, however, is that what uh, our ancestors uh, did in Egypt uh, or in uh, uh, Mesopotamia in terms of uh, making those lands uh, habitable uh, and good for uh, producing uh, crops. Uh, so this was uh, a real enterprise uh, because uh, uh, those populations did not really have the instruments, uh, the tools, uh, the technical methodologies uh, that uh, we have uh, today. Without benefit of an instruction manual, the Egyptians terraformed along the Nile River, 
Practically everything they did was being done for the first time. They grew crops along the banks of that river. The crops benefited from the annual floods that left behind Kemet, a rich black soil. This fertile soil was ideal for growing healthy crops. In its own way, Egyptian agriculture was as much of an achievement as the building of the pyramids. If it were not for the early pioneers in agriculture, including irrigation, horticulture, and viniculture, we might still be roaming the wild, hunting for our dinner. So with agriculture and the developments in agriculture came civilization. Civilization through mathematics, counting the herds, and into literature, the development of alphabets, etc.